Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are making something devilishly good. That was like a hint to what's coming. We're making devil's food cake. It has been requested here for so, so long, and I figured it was time to share with you. It is a chocolate lover's dream. It's a really easy cake to put together. Let's go over the ingredients so we can get started. You'll need all-purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, baking powder, salt, granulated sugar, eggs, instant coffee granules, so you got water and milk, semi-sweet chocolate, heavy cream, unsalted butter that's been softened, and vanilla extract. That's it. Get your oven preheated to 350. Take a couple, those are two 9-inch cake pans lined with some parchment paper and sprayed with some nonstick spray. And let's get going. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small saucepan and add my cream. And I'm just going to bring that to a simmer. And while that happens, I'm going to just cream together the butter and sugar in my standing mixer that I've fitted with a paddle attachment. Now, we're actually making the frosting before we even make the, well, we're kind of doing it at the same time, but you want to do the frosting first because it has to set for a couple of hours. I am just going to cream these two together and I'm going to crack my eggs and then we'll be able to add them to our butter and sugar mixture. My cream is to the right temperature. It's got into a slow boil, but really more of a simmer. I'm going to take, and what I have here are some semi-sweet chocolate chunks and some semi-sweet chocolate chips. That's just what I had. I wanted to kind of use them up. I'm going to pour my cream over those, and I am going to just leave them be. Sit them on the side, and let it be. In the same pan, because in the same sauce pan, why not? I'm going to add my milk and my water along with instant coffee granules. Now, if you don't have instant coffee granules, you can use, instead of using the water, just use the same amount of just regular hot coffee. But I just have the coffee granules on hand, so I figured I'd use that. Um, and I'm just gonna bring these to temperature. You want this to get nice and warm. I don't want it to boil, but I want it to be nice and warm. In the meantime, I've got my sugar and I've got my butter. I'm gonna add my eggs along with my vanilla and I'm gonna let that beat for a couple of minutes. I want that to be really nice and combined. In the meantime, all I'm doing is getting my milk and my water to get nice and warm. I don't, again, I don't want this to boil. I want it to be nice and hot, which it's getting there. It'll be there in no time. Well, that's going. I also turned off my water and milk mixture. I'm just gonna let it there for, leave it there just to cool a little bit. And now I can move back on to my Frosting. I'm just going to take my chocolate and cream that's been sitting for a few minutes and I am now going to whisk this and you'll see it starts to go from really light brown to a deep chocolate color at, you know, the more you whisk it because it's melting the chocolate. So once you have pretty much all the chocolate melted, you are ready to set this aside. That's just gorgeous. Okay, now you're just going to set that aside for a couple of hours. Yes couple of hours. It'll get to the perfect consistency after that. Let's move back on over here. I've got my eggs, I've got my butter. Let me just switch to the spatula. I've got everything combined well with the vanilla. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my dry ingredients and just kind of mix them well, briefly because they're all going to get incorporated anyway. I'm going to put half of my dry ingredients in here now and half of my mixture here. And I'm going to mix that together. And then once that's incorporated, I am going to add my remaining liquid and dry ingredients. It's really simple. It's a really easy cake. It's just very rich. It's very decadent. Now, there are tons of variations of this and tons of variations on what the frosting should be. My favorite way is with that frosting. It's almost like a candy bar. It's almost like a chocolate bar. It's not too thick. It's not too sugary, it's thin, yet decadent, yet chocolatey, yet sticky, which is exactly what I think it should be um, when it comes to that. So, enough said. It's delicious. Adding the rest of my dry ingredients along with my wet. And I'm just going to bring this up, mix everything together, and get my cake pans over here. That looks Fabulous. Now, do not be alarmed if this is on the thinner side. It's not as thick of a batter uh, like a normal chocolate cake would be. But that's 
normal. That is the consistency of devil's food cake. I am just going to take my spatula and I just, you see that sometimes the very bottom doesn't get mixed perfectly and I just take my spatula and run it along the side. And now I'm going to divide this batter in half and put it in my prepared nine inch round cake pans, trying to make this as even as possible. I think I definitely have more in that pan than I have in this pan, so I'm going to put the remaining in here. And that's it really. I mean, it's very straightforward. You can smell the chocolate. Almost, I mean, because it's, you, you added a warm liquid, it kind of woke up that chocolate and it smells divine. Mix that in. Okay, now what I do is I just kind of tap. I'm going to pop this into a preheated oven at 350 for about 30 to 35 minutes or until they are cooled, until they're cooled, until they are fully cooked and then you want to let them cool completely, which will take a couple of hours, which is just the perfect amount of time for that uh, frosting to get to the right consistency and then we'll build ourselves a devil's food cake. My cakes baked for 35 minutes exactly, I've let them cool completely, my frosting is thickened just to perfection and now what I've done is I've got a rotating cake stand but any cake stand will do and I just take four pieces of parchment paper and I put them around pretty much all the edges and then I put one of the cakes upside down so I have a flat surface. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, about a quarter of the frosting I'd say. I would say a quarter is probably right. I mean it is rich and it is delicious, without a doubt, this is going to be a very rich cake, but it is so worth it. So all I'm doing is kind of spreading this from edge to edge. Don't worry if you can kind of touch the cake a bit and it gets all crumbly because guess what we're going to be doing in a second? We're going to cover that up with the other piece and it should come right out. And then you peel off the parchment. This I'm going to put rounded side up just like that. And then I'm going to take the remaining frosting which is really thick and really rich and really chocolatey which still is good cake. I mean it's going to be pretty naughty um, but it's worth it. It's, it really is. And I'm going to spread that on top and you have the option to just do the whole, just the top or the sides. Now there's a lot of frosting here and it's very rich so I'm going to do the top and the sides. So I am just doing that. Now at the very top, I just take the tip of my knife, of, of my spatula, and I kind of just swirl it about a bit. I really don't care to do any kind of decorations or anything like that because it's a cake. And at the end of the day, if it tastes good, that's what people are going to remember. So keep that in mind. Look at that. Oh, can you hear the angels singing? Now tell me that's not weird considering it's called an angel food, an angel food cake, a devil's food cake, and I hear the angels singing. Whatevs. I'm cutting myself a piece. Oh, if you are a chocolate lover, you will be forever grateful for that. Just saying. You know, it took two seconds and I took a giant bite out of it. It was one of the most delicious things. Definitely one of the most delicious cake. It's moist, it's chocolatey. That frosting, I'm telling you, is the best frosting for this cake because it's rich, but it's not overly sweet. Because we use semi-sweet chocolate and we didn't add any other sugar into it, it's really deep in chocolate. The cake is deep chocolatey. I mean, it's just a match made in heaven. I mean, well, I don't know what else to say. It's incredibly good. Go to lauraimnikitchen.com to get this recipe. If you do recreate it, make sure you tweet me, Instagram, Facebook. I want to see the picture. And if you do follow me on social media, then you know I always find those pictures and I always comment on them or tweet them or whatnot because I love being able to see that you actually recreate some of the dishes that I do make. But anyway. Enough chatting. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me, guys, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Look at all this melted butter. I'm going to pour this all over myself. It cooled, so now it's, I got um, to schmoosh it around a bit.